Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about the altcoin market and we're just going to provide a general discussion on it. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So about a week or two ago, I don't remember exactly when it was, but whenever it was whenever Total 3 made a its first higher high right? I made a video acknowledging that, hey, this is the first higher high that the altcoin market has had. And it is worth noting that that is a change in the trend. And if you're unfamiliar with what trend I'm talking about, essentially the whole idea was that the altcoin market was doing nothing more than putting in lower highs. Okay. But Without a doubt, this is the first higher high that the altcoin market has been able to achieve for approximately two years. Okay, the first higher high that the altcoin market has been able to achieve for the last two years because, you know, this is coming in November of 2023 and we know that the altcoin market topped out in November of 2021. If you have followed this channel for the last year, You'll be, aware, you'll be well aware of my views on the collective altcoin market. And my views have been that collectively, the altcoin market is bleeding back to Bitcoin in, in the pre-having year. And so crypto portfolios ideally would be Bitcoin heavy because the Bitcoin dominance is going up right? That has been my view. And it was not a popular view coming into the beginning of this year um, by any stretch of the imagination, but you would probably be hard pressed to find any other thing in the cryptoverse that has not had a single weekly close below its bull market support ban for the entire year. During this entire year of 2023, we only had a single wick below the bull market support band, the 20-week estimate, the 21-week EMA, by the altcoin market, right? Only a single wick. There are not many things out there in the cryptoverse that have been above the bull market support band with no weekly closes below it for the entire year. So I am happy that this theory has played out. And the only question is, of course, will it continue to play out, right? Will it continue to play out or will it not? Okay. That is, of course, the biggest question we have to ask ourselves. So total three, higher high. Potentially a change in the trend. I'm not going to sit here and, and act like it can't be a change in the trend. It very well could. Perhaps the next thing to look for would be to see if it puts in a macro high or low, right? If you're going to put in a higher high, then ideally at some point you're also going to put in a higher low, right? And, and sort of prove that the trend has changed, okay? So that I think is, is sort of what, you know, what to look for at this point is, is can it put in a macro higher low? Now, there's a few things I want to talk about. You know, total three in includes stable coins and, and all this other stuff. So what we're going to look at, this is the altcoin market cap, uh, just altcoins. Like we're not looking at stable coins. So this is what it looks like going all the way back to 2013. And what I want to look at is exactly where the altcoin market is today with respect to the last two market cycles. Okay. With, the, with respect to the last two market cycles. Now, what I previously said with the altcoin market is that the altcoin market can go put in new lows even if Bitcoin doesn't, right, in the pre-having year. And we know that many altcoins were putting in new lows last month, right? I mean, a lot of them were. Not all of them, admittedly, but a lot of them were, right? Like Polkadot literally just put in a new low last month. Cardano put in a new low in June, right? Um, Avalanche put in a new low in October. Solana has not put in a new low since December, right? So some alts have put in new lows while others have not. 
BNB has not put in a new low, but it's also not even that far off of its lowest low, you know, of the lowest price, right? Like it's not even that far off of it. So it really does go to show just how weak the altcoin market can be collectively in the pre-having year when you compare it to Bitcoin, right? When you compare it to Bitcoin, you can see just how weak the altcoin market is. And so the statements that I made at the beginning of the year, I still stand by, and that essentially is investments in crypto in pre-having years. While it is possible to find altcoins that outperform Bitcoin, Bitcoin dominance should go up. Therefore, you can help preserve the Satoshi value of your portfolio just by keeping a majority of it in Bitcoin. So while it's true that some of these altcoins are off their lows, the dominance has gone up the entire year, right? So while it's true that altcoins, most of them are off their lows on their USD pairs, they've also mostly been bleeding back to Bitcoin for the entire year. Okay, so we know that's been the truth. Now, the question is, is when does this trend change? Now, you know, I, I wrote some notes to myself or sort of mental notes, I guess, um, back, you know, a, a year or two ago saying that I, I would sort of relinquish my, you know, sort of my views on this, on, on the altcoin market by the end of the pre-having year. And the reason for that is because, you know, there is always the chance that we repeat prior cycles, right? There's always that chance. But what I want to do in terms of understanding what would that look like, I want to look at the last two cycles and compare it to where we are today, right? So look at last cycle. And what I want to do is I want to include sort of the Q3 2020 or 2018 area, go all the way across, and I want to see just how long it took the altcoin market to durably break above where it was, sort of where it topped out before the final drop. So maybe not Q3, but that final drop in November of 2018. How long did it durably, or how long did it take for the altcoin market to durably break above it? Not just get above it and hang around, but to durably break above it and not go back down to it. So if you look at the line going across the page, right, you can see that we got above it over here in early 2019 or maybe like halfway through 2019. We also came back up to that level in March of 2020 or February of 2020. And we came back up again to that level in August of 2020. So now you're out, you know, more than halfway into the halving year. And finally, right, if you go all the way out to November of 2020, so the last part of the halving year, that's when the altcoin market durably broke out and, and did not revisit those levels, right? So it took until the end of the halving year for the altcoin market to show that, to show that, that strength, you know, in a, in a sustained way, right? Like it wasn't just sort of a one-off move where it gets above those highs only to collapse back down. Like it did a couple of times. I mean, it did about three times, right? Um, maybe even more, but you know, here, here was a move where it went up and then it came back down. Uh, and moved up again, and then came all the way back down. And then, of course, you had your move into the halving year, where it moved up and then ultimately came back down. And then you had your move into the summer of 2020, where it moved up to these to these highs, stayed at those highs basically from August until November, and then finally broke to the upside in late November. Okay, so all in all, from this level here, from November of 2018. It took approximately two years to durably break above that threshold. Two years. So then I want to look at at this cycle because this you know this cycle is is not as as familiar to a lot of people because not a lot of people lived you know were, were, were in crypto at the time. But you know if you look at at say and it's kind of a different cycle in the sense that there wasn't a major drop in the in the altcoin market in. Um, you know, like in, in late 2014. But I mean, one of the reasons was the altcoin market was, I mean, it was literally not even a billion in market cap. And you're talking about just like 500 million in market cap. We had a bit, a pretty big drop in August. So um, maybe we could just use the high from June. If you look at the June 2014 high and you go across the page, right? You can see that we came close to it in September of 2014. We got above it in December of 2014. We, you know, got to that high again 
out in July of 2015 and August of 2015. We then got back up to it in February of 2016, right? Held it as support in April and then durably broke up by June of the halving year, right? So again, it took about two years before we had a durable break to the upside. I mean, like we broke above it sooner than that, right, in March, but then we back tested it. We held it as support for a while before durably breaking up, really never to revisit that level again. So again, it took about, what, two years or so. So then I want to look at, at, at where it is today, right? And again, like I'm trying to be as open and as honest and possi as possible. My views have been that the Bitcoin dominance is going higher this year, which is why my crypto portfolio has been Bitcoin heavy. Um, but I also want people to recognize that altcoins, you know, when they move, they can move quickly, right? So let's just try to understand where the altcoin market is today. So where it is right now. And we'll go back to sort of what happened over here in Q3. Now, what's interesting is if you look at, at what happened just before it broke down, right, whether you want to take it as in August or, or October, it's more or less the same level, right, around a market cap of $308 billion or $310 billion. Again, this might sound unfamiliar because we know that, you know, the market cap of altcoins total three is over $400 billion. But again, we're not including stablecoins here, right? We're just including the altcoin market. But, you know, if you take either this high in August or this high in November, two years after November would put you in November of 2024, right? Two years after August would put you in August of 2024. And remember, the last two cycles for altcoins, they did not durably break that level until about two years later, right? Again, like you got to around that level sometimes before the two-year mark, but you still were testing that level for a, a long time. And one of the reasons why it can test that level for a long time sometimes is because Bitcoin's going up and the altcoin market just sits still, right? It just absolutely sits still. Sometimes the altcoin market bleeds when Bitcoin is going up, right? And, and again, like people forget this, um, but there's a lot of time where like Bitcoin rallies and altcoins, they bleed back to Bitcoin. And, and also they sometimes go down on their USD pairs as well. There's a lot of examples of this, right? I mean, there's plenty of examples. Let's go take a look at a few of them, right? Like look at XRP. Look at look at what XRP was doing back in, you know, like in, 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 in 2020. Here, it had a nice move out into August, but then it still dropped, right? It still dropped. There was another big drop over here. It wasn't making any big move until we got to the post having year. So again, showing that a Bitcoin heavy portfolio wasn't the worst way to go. Solana is another example. I mean, I know Solana has had, you know, it's had a, a crazy move recently. And I'm not trying to discount that. I mean, if you if you bought it, then congratulations, right? I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to hide behind that. I, I'm, I'm surprised it's gone up as much as it has. But look what happened in, you know, the last part of 2020 when Bitcoin was going up, like Solana went down about 80% or so. So you can have periods where the altcoin market does well as long as Bitcoin is doing exactly what it is today, where it's not moving, but it's above the bull market support band, right? So it's not moving, it's above the bull market support band. When that happens, that's when the altcoin market tends to move, okay? If Bitcoin were to go up aggressively or if Bitcoin were to go down aggressively, then that's when the altcoin market tends to bleed, right, back to Bitcoin. So I'm looking at this chart, right? I'm looking at this chart and thinking, well, if it plays out like the last two cycles, then it means we would not necessarily expect the altcoin market to durably break above either the November high or the August high until August or November of the halving year, right? That would, that's what my expectation would be. Maybe this cycle plays out differently, right? I don't know. That, that's just basically if it played out like the last two cycles. In order to durably leave this area behind, the last two cycles show us that that phase comes 
sometime in the having year. Right? Comes sometime in the having year. Now, admittedly, if you've been buying altcoins on their USD pairs, collectively, you're probably doing okay right now, right? But the counterpoint is, had you bought Bitcoin instead, you'd be up a lot more on average, right? Yes, if you were buying some of the altcoins that shot up 300%, then you're you're better off with that altcoin if you, if you were able to get that one. So that's kind of where we are right now. Now, The key, I mean, the, the, sort of the, the, the key always lies with, with the dominance of Bitcoin, right? It's all about when does the Bitcoin dominance top, right? And, and, and when it does, even then, it doesn't mean that altcoins don't have downside risk. We know they do. It's just that they might become worth the risk relative to Bitcoin, right? Relative to Bitcoin. It's not that they can't go down. And in fact, last cycle, if you remember, even after Bitcoin dominance topped, right, here, the altcoin market still struggled, right? Dominance topped here, altcoin market still struggled for a while. So, but what would happen though, was while the altcoin market struggled, they weren't struggling on their Bitcoin pairs as much. They were, it was mostly just struggling on their USD pairs because Bitcoin was struggling on its USD pair. But they were not struggling as much on their Bitcoin pairs, right? Take a look at, at Ether Bitcoin, right? When did it bottom out? It bottomed out in September of the pre-having year, and then it found sort of a double bottom in December of the pre-having year last cycle. The question is, is did it bottom out here because that's when alts bottom against Bitcoin or the ones that are going to survive or did it bottom out because that's when the Fed went to looser monetary policy and that was when we saw rate cuts, right? Your guess, right? Your guess is as good as mine. I mean, we all have our theories, but there's no way to know. We, we don't have a ton of data, right? We don't have a ton of data to compare to. I look at it and say, well, I mean, my expectation is that higher risk assets would bleed to lower risk assets in a in a tightening cycle, right? Late in a late cycle environment where rates are high and the Fed's going through QT, I would expect alts to bleed to Bitcoin. But we also know that at some point the Fed will pivot. And when they do pivot and they go back to looser monetary policy, that's normally when altcoins would durably start to outperform Bitcoin. The market right now is saying that the first rate cut is coming in May. And this oscillate, I mean, this, it might have changed, actually. Let me go take a look. It's always changing. Um, it looks like, yeah, according to this, the first rate cut occurs in May. Which is kind of funny because that's right around the Bitcoin halving, you know, about a one month later. These probabilities can change, right? I mean, if the labor market were to soften up sooner rather than later, then the Fed could cut earlier. If they were to, if the labor market softens up, you know, not for another year or two, then all of these rate cuts have no business being priced in. So, and, and again, like the, the, this, this analysis does not just apply for Ether Bitcoin. Like, go look at, at at Ada Bitcoin, right? When did it find its low after? you know, last cycle, it was in August of 2019, which again was after the Fed had started cutting rates. Not before, it was after the Fed started cutting rates. We got our first rate cut, ate a bottom against Bitcoin. So I go back to this idea of like, well, you know, and again, like at the end of 2022, I, I, I thought to myself, how do I want to how do I want to navigate this? Because there's two ways, right? The first way is to just say, all right, well, you know, go buy. You know, it, it's okay to buy whatever because eventually it'll it'll likely go up. The other way was to say, well, how do we manage our risk appropriately? And the way we manage our risk appropriately is to understand if high risk will bleed to low risk. And the way we understand that is if we think Bitcoin dominance is going higher. And if we think Bitcoin dominance is going higher then a Bitcoin heavy portfolio makes sense, right? Now, some people have stayed 100% cash. 
I've never suggested that. In 2022, I said cash was king. I don't think I've said that at all in 2023. I think that having a good cash position in case we go into a recession, I think that makes sense, right? I think that makes a lot of sense. And I'm certainly not the only person who thinks that. Um, not that that necessarily makes it right, right? I mean, just because people think it doesn't, you know, doesn't necessarily make it right. But if you were to go look at, at say, money going into, you know, retail money market funds, right? Money is pouring in. Why is money pouring into this? Why is that? Well, it's because the risk-free rate now is like five and a half percent, right? You can go get five and a half percent risk-free. Now, again, I know for, for a lot of crypto investors, five and a half percent, like you're not even, that's nothing, right? Like you're not, you're not going to get excited about that. But for, you know, for a lot of investors, this is the first time that five and a half percent risk-free has been ever, has ever been available. So some people have elected, and by some people, I mean, you know, there's more money going into money market funds today than there really ever has been. Look at the year over year percentage change of this, right? And you can wonder like, well, why would it eventually go down? Well, the reason it eventually goes down is because the Fed starts to cut and therefore the risk-free rate goes down. And if the risk-free rate goes down, you wanna go find that yield somewhere else because if you're not gonna get five and a half percent anymore, you know, if the risk-free rate goes back to 3%, well, hell, I mean, you can get 3% much easier in, in other markets, right? Five and a half percent is, is somewhat attractive for people. If it weren't, you wouldn't see all this money going into money market funds. So that phase hasn't happened yet, right? Like this, you know, if you, if you sort of zoom in, you know, you can still see it slowly going higher. If you look at a month over month change, um, you know, it's, it's basically been relatively steady at around this pace, you know, two to 3% growth, um, you know, for a while now. So, you know, that's where that is, right? So then I, you know, I look at, at the altcoin market and I, you know, I look at it and say, well, are we going to get rejected here? Or does it break? Does it break out? Last cycle, we got above it a couple of times, or went back to it a couple of times, you know? But it still took until August 2020 to durably break above. And really, not even then. I mean, really, we still were breaking down below it as late as November of 2020. You could have stayed Bitcoin heavy this entire time converted your Bitcoin to alts during the, during the parabolic rally by Bitcoin to new highs, and then you would have made a ton of money in the altcoin market after that. After riding the Bitcoin rally up, you know, from 3K, just even up to like 40K, right? That's like over a 10X move. You convert your Bitcoin to alts there, and then the altcoin market rallies. That's the idea. But I will say this, you know, you know, I, I have been very vocal about about Bitcoin being the place to preserve the Satoshi value of your portfolio for about two years now. But I also understand the risk of continuing to say that forever. So you know, as we get into the having year, I, I will not say that anymore. I understand that the altcoin market could start to outperform at some point in 2024. Still doesn't mean that Bitcoin dominance won't go up, right? If history is any indication, until we get a pivot, alts are still likely going to underperform Bitcoin. So the only way that the altcoin party continues is if the Bitcoin party continues. And that's what I said before, right? If altcoins go up, it's only because Bitcoin went up first. It's not because, it's not because Bitcoin went down and the altcoin market just decided to go party by itself. It's only because Bitcoin went up first. And you can see that that has happened, right? I mean, if you look at, at Bitcoin, this move here, this is a 51% a rally, right? A 51% rally off of a higher low. Total three here, this is a 47% rally off more or less the same level that it was at back in December of 2022. So look, when when we got to the end of 2022 and 
you know, I said back then that that low could be the bottom or it could theoretically be a future recession low and somewhat the, sometime in the nebulous future because in recessions, we often put in new lows. Um, but sometimes those new lows can take years to sort of to realize. That's only assuming you even get a recession. Um, I knew there were two ways that I could navigate. It was like, well, I could say, you know, everything or I could say, you know, Bitcoin heavy is where you want to be. And in my own experience, last cycle, I DCA'd a lot of altcoins throughout the pre-having year. And I'm like, I would have just been better off buying Bitcoin if I'm going to buy if I'm going to buy anything because alts are bleeding back to Bitcoin. So, you know, that is is essentially what my dilemma was back then. And I, I chose arguably the harder option because. The truth is that most people don't even care about alt Bitcoin pairs. All they care about alt USD pairs. You know, they don't necessarily care if total three is down against Bitcoin if it's up forty percent on the U.S. dollar, right? If you were to look at total three just divided by Bitcoin, you know, since the end of twenty twenty two, it's down forty seven percent. 46%. And just a few weeks ago, just a few weeks ago, it was down 50%, right? 50% over a year. It's a huge drop. So yes, the easier route in the pre-having year would just be to say, you know, altcoins, right? Every time they go out, I'll buy the dip. But the thing that helps preserve the Satoshi valuation is to say, no, Bitcoin heavy in the pre-having year. Because alts will collectively bleed back to Bitcoin. And every time I say that, someone's like, well, if you buy top alts, right, then they're going to outperform Bitcoin. Yes, but I am not smart enough to know which ones those are going to be. I'm not. And I, I don't have any problem admitting that. I have no idea which ones are going to outperform Bitcoin. I, I know that Bitcoin, you know, going into this year, I, I thought that I knew that Bitcoin would outperform the rest of the market collectively. And that's been true. But even back then, I said that some altcoins will underperform Bitcoin. Right. So and I stand by that. I mean, that hasn't been wrong. Again, the dominance of Bitcoin has been going up for the entire year. And it's been it's been a struggle, you know, the entire way. I mean, think about how many times this year it felt like the dominance was going down. It never really stopped going up. Never really stopped going up. And if you exclude stable coins, if you exclude stable coins, it's been going up for two and a half years since May of 2021. Right? Bitcoin dominance excluding stables has been going up since May of 2021. This is why like when you when you look at at some of the altcoins, right? Like if you look at at say like or even if you go look at like Ether Bitcoin, if you look at a uh, 1 over Ether Bitcoin, what do you notice? Look at this trend. I mean, a lot of people look at the Ether Bitcoin chart and they only ever want to say it's going to go up because we're I think as humans, we're biased to to try to think positively and say, "All right, well, it'll go up." But look at at Bitcoin divided by ETH, right? I mean, it's been in an uptrend and if people were looking at this chart, they probably would have been bullish on it. But because they keep they've been looking at this chart, they keep saying ETH is holding up well against Bitcoin. But again, the reality is that Ether has been bleeding against Bitcoin for the better part of two years now. And people have been saying it's it's holding up well the entire way that it's been bleeding. In December of 2021, one Bitcoin would have fetched you about 11 ETH. Today it gets you around 18 ETH. Same same study could be done on a lot of altcoins, right? Like if you look at at um, ADA Bitcoin, sorry. If you look at um, one over ADA Bitcoin, right? So like once upon a time in late 2021, one Bitcoin would have fetched you around 16,000 ADA. Today it gets you around 98,000 ADA, which is a little less than what you could have gotten a few weeks ago, 123,000 ADA. And it's actually below the bull market support band. It was below it over here as well, so we'll have to see. A, you know, we'll have to see if this is a a, a, a sustain a durable development in the trend. But it goes to show you just how much a Bitcoin heavy portfolio 
can preserve the Satoshi valuation of your of your of your portfolio in the pre-having year. And it, and it shows you just how much the altcoin market can bleed back to Bitcoin during that time. So look, I, I mean, I see a ton of people on Twitter like super bullish about the altcoin market and you know, I'm human, right? Like I like I want to join in with them and I look at the charts and I'm like, look, I mean like we could be heading that direction. You know, we could be. But I also know that Bitcoin leads the bull market to new highs. It's not the altcoin market. In fact, last cycle, by the time Bitcoin hit a new high, Ethereum was still half of its all-time high. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true, right? Like if you look at Bitcoin last cycle, by the time it hit an all-time high over here in December, look at where Ethereum was in December, right here. So this is where Bitcoin had an all-time high. Ether was at $700. It was at half of its all-time high. So it really does go to show that a Bitcoin-heavy crypto portfolio can be valid until Bitcoin breaks into new highs, right? It can be. And I've said that for like the last two years, right? Like you could stick with Bitcoin until it breaks to new highs and, and likely be better off and not lose nearly as much sleep at night because you have Bitcoin and you don't have some basket of altcoins, you know, one of which could be getting rugged at any moment. Be that as it may, in late 2022, you know, I, I sort of made the decision to focus on preserving the Satoshi valuation. Now it's late 2023. I still think there's a good chance that alts will bleed back to Bitcoin for a while until the Fed pivots, right? I do. At the same time, I don't necessarily enjoy being, you know, being known as like anti altcoins because I won't talk about anything other than Bitcoin dominance. For me, it's difficult because, you know, I was mocked a lot for these views on Bitcoin dominance throughout the year. But it, they were never wrong. It was never the wrong view. I was laughed at by many for talking about the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation dropping and pointing out every single lower high and lower low. But I, I come back to this idea that like, it wasn't wrong. Like it wasn't wrong. It was not the wrong view. It was the correct view. And, and now, instead of them focusing on the Ether Bitcoin valuation, they focus on the Ether USD valuation because that's the next thing they can go to. Because, you know, you, you basically get to the point where like, all right, well, if this one's not going your way, then you just go to the one that is, right? And you focus on Ether USD. But again, you still would have been better off with Bitcoin. By far, still would have been better off with Bitcoin. I converted a lot of my Ether to Bitcoin Right here. I converted more here and I converted more up here at the merge. Right? And today, all of those trades are in the money. All of them. And I look at this, I look at this, and I, I, I try to think to myself, like, what is going to happen here with Ether Bitcoin? You know, what is going to happen? And I mean, I got to tell you, I mean, once upon a time, my convictions were certainly stronger, um, but these markets humble everyone. And I look at the chart and I say, look, similar pattern so far, right? You get your move to the downside, you get two green candles and then a red, your move to the downside, two green candles and then a red, and you get a, another ca a green candle where the wick went up above the prior wick which potentially is in the move that we're in right now. You can see that the Ether Bitcoin valuation is all the way back up to 0.05562. If we were to go above the, the wick from last week, it would have been going above 0.05735. And then the decision candle would, would have been next week, right? That would be the decision candle. So perhaps we find out next week which way this entire thing is going to break, right? Could be next week. Could it go up? Could. I will say 
the main difference between this this move and this one is that this one was just like a capitulation, right? And we went straight back up. There really wasn't a whole lot of resistance. This is not a capitulation, right? Like this is efficient selling from Ether back to Bitcoin. So you did not really have a lot of resistance over here, but now you have all sorts of resistance that, that you'd have to get through, right? So I, I, I don't know. I mean, my gut, my gut would say that it's more likely to break down than up. But even if it were to break down, it doesn't mean that it can't wick up first. In fact, over here, when it wicked down, it was sort of a fake out back down to 0.053 and then it went up. So it's almost like whatever the initial move is, you might have to discount it as being a potential fake out. So I look at this chart and I'm like, well, I mean, it, it seems like it's been going the way we thought. It's, it's been dropping all year. What's the problem, right? Bitcoin dominance has been going higher all year, right? What's the problem? The problem is Bitcoin USD has gone higher than I thought it would. My expectation this year was that Bitcoin would top out no higher than 35K. This was clearly wrong, right? Clearly wrong. I don't have an excuse for it. I was just wrong, right? You know, a lot of people say, well, when are you going to admit you're wrong? Guys, I, every day, every day I'll be on here admitting I'm wrong, right? About something more, more than likely. It topped out. My expectation would be it would go no higher than 35K. It's gone higher than that. So that's the problem, right? That's the problem. Because it's gone higher than 35K, it's led altcoins to going to sort of going up against uh, on their own USD pairs as well. One interesting thing about the ether bitcoin pair is that you know i do wonder if bnb bitcoin is showing a warning sign because ether bitcoin has not gone to levels like like where it is right now is still where it was in june of 2022 like it has not gone to the levels back over here you know in april of 2021 except for on this single wick right except for that single wick because these this move right here was in may okay but if you go look at bnb bitcoin you see that what used to be support that it held as support here and here and here has now broken and even lower time frame support right here has now broken and bnb bitcoin is at the lowest valuation it has been at since April of 2021. This has been a massive tailwind for the Bitcoin dominance, right? A massive tailwind and arguably is one of the reasons why Bitcoin has gone up so much. I mean, look at this. When you have altcoins that have higher high market caps like BNB or Ether bleeding back to Bitcoin, it can lead the price of Bitcoin higher. And look at this move, right? I mean, BNB Bitcoin is down 68% since Bitcoin capitulated in November. And then if you go look at at the same thing with Ether Bitcoin, since the merge, it's down 35%, right? So when you have people converting altcoins to Bitcoin, Bitcoin can go up, right? And I always said that. I mean, I always expected that Bitcoin would spend a decent part of the year going up. I thought it would spend about half the year going up. And clearly it's gone up more than half the year. There's more liquidity in the system than I was, I was sort of anticipating there was. Even though these general trends are true, there still has been more, more liquidity than, than I, I necessarily anticipated. So then what is the holdup? Like, wh what do you do with the altcoin market? Well, I'll say this. If you think that the dominance has topped out, then altcoins could become worth the risk to you. If you think there's no recession, then altcoins could become worth the risk to you. Even if you think there is going to be a recession, but you think it's going to be a year from now, then maybe altcoins are worth the risk to you. It all depends on what you think is the most likely outcome in the short term. You might say, well, Ben, what are you talking about with this recession? Look, my view has been that at the end of the business cycle, whenever that may be, it ends in a recession. The reason I think that is because I, I, history shows us that in order, when, in order to durably get inflation back to 2%, you need a recession. Could we have a soft landing? It's possible. 
right? But even in soft landing scenarios, that you know, you still normally get some type of correction in in risk assets. And we did have a correction in the S and P recently, but you know, we called for that correction, right? We saw the S and P will likely get a five to ten percent correction back in July. And then now, I mean, going into the end of the year, as we said a, a few weeks ago, normally you, you see the stock market go up and then consolidate and go up normally in the last couple of months of pre-election years, right? We said that many times. So if you look at like the yield curve, it's been inverted for a long time. If you look at treasury yield spreads, you can see that normally when you have these deep inversions, we tend to get a recession at some point. So my dilemma, if you can appreciate it, is what do I do, right? Like, do I, do I ignore this? Do I ignore the macro, the yield curve stuff that has, been, has a pretty good track record, right? Do I ignore it? And just say, well, you know what? Whatever. Who cares? Who cares about the macro, right? Do I say that and just look at the altcoin market and say, look, it's put in a higher high. Therefore, let's, you know, let's get on our rally caps and celebrate. There's always a chance that, you know, we just, we rally for months and then, and then we go put in, you know, we go into a recession, right? Could go on for a year. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. So it, it feels somewhat of a difficult position to be in just to speak open, you know, just speak honestly and openly is because like, like I want to join I want to join in on the hype and, 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 you know, be excited about the cryptoverse and be like, yeah, like this thing is going to grow to 10 trillion and all that stuff. But I also look at the market and I'm like, I also don't want to like, you know, get super bullish on altcoins if a recession is around the corner. But then at the same time, if the recession is say a year from now, there's still a lot of room for the altcoin market to move potentially between now and then. So it's it's a difficult position to be in. And so the way that I, I'm sort of going to handle this is to say, look, if you want to take on the risk of the altcoin market, then go for it, right? It's your decision to make. It's your responsibility. And by the way, if you buy an altcoin that some influencer is promoting, and then if it does go down, if we go into a recession, don't blame them, right? You're the one taking the risk. It either pays off or it doesn't. And if it does pay off, don't forget to take profits. But that's sort of the dilemma that we're in today is, you know, how long can it move before the macro uh, potentially kicks in? And the macro moves incredibly slowly. This is my first business cycle. I mean, yes, we had a recession in 2020, but it was really unlike any recession we've ever seen. The last recession that was, you know, more typical of a recession where the unemployment rate sort of slowly goes up was back in 2008. I was in high school back then, right? Like I didn't, it's not like I had any understanding of what the markets were doing. I don't know, you know? Like what happens if everyone piles into altcoins just before the halving, we all put on our rally caps and then a recession hits and then, and then we just go back down, right? There's a chance that that happens as well. So, you know, I look back at this year and I, I do wonder like, you know, how could I have done things differently? How could I have communicated better? Um, you know, one thing is, you know, I, I probably could have talked a little bit more about, you know, maybe, maybe I could have talked a little bit more about, about even though Bitcoin dominance goes up, like some altcoins outperform, maybe I could have looked at more case studies where that was occurring. So to, to not feel like people are being alienated by saying that same line, like, well, the dominance is going higher. Well, like, what about these 10 altcoins that are, are sort of going up? So maybe that's what I could have done better. Um... I still think like I, you know, I, like if you had told me at the beginning of the year, dominance would be at 52%. Ether Bitcoin would, would, would be back at the June lows, right? If you had told me all that at the beginning of the year, like ADA Bitcoin would be, you know, at what? A thousand sats. Remember the beginning of the year, it was at like 1600, 1700. I'd have been like, great, like, what's the problem, right? Like, you know, like all these theories are, are, are panning out, right? At least directionally. I mean, I, I have expected A to Bitcoin to go lower than 800 sats, but I also think to all the critics, like who, who are, who's been against that view, I mean, it literally put in a new low, not even a month ago, right? So like, yes, on every single rally, we can say Ben was wrong, right? But again, this has been the trend 
for over two years, it's impossible for me to time the exact bottom, right? It's impossible. I'm not going to try. It's impossible. All I know at this point is that it put in a new low less than a month ago. So how can I sit here and say that the thesis has been wrong? It's been trending in the direction that we thought, that I thought. The other thing that I go back to is this, you know, this total three minus USDT divided by Bitcoin. I'm like, well, is this thing going to break down like it did last cycle? Because it looks pretty freaking familiar, you know? It looks pretty familiar. And by the way, when it broke down, remember, when did alt bottom against Bitcoin? After we got rate cuts here, alts bottomed here against Bitcoin in September, just after the first rate cut. But the move that brought altcoins down on their Bitcoin pairs, it was a Bitcoin rally, right? Like it was a Bitcoin rally. So maybe you get something like that again, right? I don't know. Maybe it's a dump. I, I don't know what, what it's going to be or if it's going to even happen. I just know that that's what happened last cycle is that we got a Bitcoin rally, altcoins finally durably broke below 40% against Bitcoin. You can see right now it's at 44%. And then it went down to 25%. That's what happened last cycle. And it didn't happen until, you know, and, and this final break here occurred just before the, the Fed started to cut rates. So maybe that's the key. Maybe this doesn't break down until just before the Fed starts to cut, which could, I mean, it could always come at any time, probably not going to happen this year, but you could see it break down and then the Fed cut a few months later. Because the issue is if it does break down, it's starting to signify that there is really weakness in, you know, in the market, right? Like if altcoins just simply cannot compete with Bitcoin, you know, liquidity is being removed, et cetera. It just shows that the Fed is, is probably doing too much and that they're going to have to pivot at some point. Again, the market doesn't think they're going to pivot until May. If the market's right, that's still a long time away, right? That's still a long time from now. So I guess, you know, really what I'm trying to say is I hope that this, these strategies that we've outlined this year have been helpful. I understand that not everything I say comes true. Um, I want you to understand that if you take on the risk of the altcoin market, you could be rewarded if we avoid a recession, right? If you take on the altcoin, the risk of the altcoin market and we have a recession, then you have to be okay with the downside, right? Again, as I said in my video that I did a week or two ago, I'm going to, to really soften up my view on the altcoin market going into the halving year just simply because I know that while there is still risk to the downside, there's also upside risk relative to Bitcoin around a Fed pivot. And I expect the Fed to pivot likely in 2024. I expect them to pivot at some point in 2024. So I'm not going to like, I mean, I'd like to have like a general macro thesis going into the year, right? Like, so for me in 2023, it was like Ether, Bitcoin will bleed, alts will bleed against Bitcoin, Bitcoin dominance is gonna go up, uh, Bitcoin will spend half the year going up, half the year going down, uh, so on and so forth, right? Some of those theories came came true, some of them didn't, but that's what I, you know, that's what I use to sort of navigate this year, right? Is, is to think like, what are the most likely outcomes and how do I plan for that? Next year, going into next year, I don't want to enter into 2024 saying that alts are going to bleed against Bitcoin for the entire year, because that's probably not true, right? It's probably not true. They'll, they'll probably start to outperform Bitcoin once we get to a Fed pivot. And guys, you know, this is not unique to crypto by any stretch of the imagination. If you go look at the Russell, you can see that it bottomed out against, this is the Russell divided by the S&P. The Russell did not bottom out against the S&P until the Fed started, you know, got to their last rate cut. Right. And you can see here that the Russell just keeps bleeding against the S&P. It's because high risk is bleeding to low risk. Why is that? Well, 
it's because companies like Apple and Google and you know and Nvidia and Microsoft and Meta and all these you know these major companies it's because they have you know they have much better balance sheets than a lot of the smaller companies they're not they're not nearly as likely to go bankrupt or to you know not be able to withstand these difficult times like those are the companies that are more likely to withstand it so investors have a choice go put your money in this random micro cap stock that you know, my, may or may not survive. By the way, bankruptcies have been going up that may or may not survive or just go put it in a blue chip, go put it in Apple or, or something like that, that you know is going to survive, right? It doesn't mean it's not going to go down if there is a recession, but you have confidence that even if there is a recession, Apple will survive through it. You don't have confidence necessarily that every asset in the Russell 2000 is going to survive. So what do you do? People still want to invest, but instead of investing in the micro caps, they invest in the blue chips, the magnificent seven, as they call it. With crypto, it's the exact same thing. It's just that instead of the magnificent seven, you have the magnificent one, Bitcoin, the one that's been going up for the entire year and where the dominance has been going up for the entire year. If you were to plot out the dominance of the magnificent seven against the stock market, against the Russell, I bet it looks something like this. It's because low risk, is sucking in liquidity from high-risk assets. And those high-risk assets are not likely going to durably outperform the blue chips until we go back to looser monetary policy. And the reason for that is once we go back to looser monetary policy and we get to the last rate cut, then investors can look around and say, well, hell, all these companies that haven't filed bankruptcy, they're still here. And they're at really extremely low valuations. And with looser monetary policy, they should start to thrive again. So you look at the companies, you're like, well, look at them. You know, we're back at looser monetary policy, but these things are at, at, at you know, lows that we haven't seen forever. All right, look at the Russell. It was still going up in late 2019 and 2020 but it was trailing the S&P. And it wasn't until the final crash where the Fed pivoted that, that, the, that the small caps started to outperform the blue chips, right? It wasn't until then, once we got back to looser monetary policy. So, you know, when you look at the altcoin market, it looks pretty familiar in terms of this sort of price action, right? Just kind of grinds around for a while. And then sometime mid to late halving year, it starts to break up. That's what happened last cycle, right? Mid to late halving year is when it really started to, to hold support on these highs, and then it broke up. Again, you would have been better off just buying Bitcoin this entire time and preserving the Satoshi valuation of your portfolio. Same thing over here, right? It did not durably break up until, you know, halfway to the end of the halving year. Same thing over here, right? doing the same thing. We're still in the pre-having year. Could this time be accelerated? Maybe, right? Maybe. If you want to take on the risk of the altcoin market, it is your risk to take on. It's not my risk. It's no one else's risk. It is your risk to take on. You understand what the risks are. You understand that there are, you know, there are some indicators that suggest a recession could come, but it could be a year away. It could be tomorrow. I don't know. I will say, I'm not going to sit up here and make videos every single day until it happens, you know, and then claim that I was right when it finally does happen, right? I will just simply say that, look, it, it, there's a risk that it will happen sometime next year. And, you know, the way that most investors are, are preparing themselves, they're, they're going into the higher market cap stuff, right? They're getting into, into the, into the blue chips because they, they, they're more confident that those things can survive even if there's a downturn. And what's interesting is, I mean, if you look at, at this, right? I mean, you can see that we came up to this a couple times. I mean, this was even in, in the, the early part of the halving year and we sold off into this recession. Now, again, it was a black swan. I'm not trying to say that we should expect something like that, but you know, it just goes to show you what could theoretically happen, right? Like, you know, if you look at total three, you can see, or sorry, the altcoin market, this is not including stables. You can see that it's basically back up at these highs, 
a little, it, it actually took those out just, just brief, briefly and it's back now back below. Um, if it puts in a, a higher low, then that's a point for the altcoin market. I would still suggest that the only way the altcoin market durably breaks out is if Bitcoin does it first, right? So that's where we are. Those are my honest views on the altcoin market. I hope that my views this year have been helpful uh, to some of you, although I know other, you know, some people might feel like, um, feel like that's not true and that's fine. Um, some of the theories have panned out, dominance up, alt Bitcoin pairs down. Some of them have not. Bitcoin, you know, has not spent half the year going down like I thought. It's been most of the year going up. And we'll see what, you know, we'll see what 2024 brings. Um, but I just, you know, I want people to know that, like, I'm not, I'm not anti altcoins. I'm not a Bitcoin maxi. My views are, are just strictly based on where I think we are in the business cycle and based on, on monetary policy. And, you know, the hardest thing is people saying this time is different. And the, the, the hardest thing about people that say this time is different is you could literally apply it to either outcome. And no matter what outcome there is, there's going to be people that say, well, why did you think this time was different? If you're not familiar with what I'm saying, basically what I'm implying is like, like, you know, if, if the altcoin market just sort of slowly trends up for the next two years, then everyone's going to say, even with occasional pullbacks, right? Then everyone's just going to say that, well, why did you assume that this time is different? Right? And by the way, you could still get a sell-off and a new low in the altcoin market and still trend up for two years after that. I mean, that's essentially, or a year after that, that's essentially what happened last cycle, right? You got a, you got a recession in the halving year, and then you, you trended up after that when the Fed started to print. You know, this low over here came at the very end of, of the pre-halving year, and you were still putting in higher lows, not much, up, not, not much above it, even in, in the early part of the halving year. So yeah, like you could look at this and say, well, this time's not different. It's going to play out the same way and we should plan for that. But then someone else could say, you know, if we do go into a recession in late, like, let's say like in, in 2024, people will be like, well, why did you think this time was different? Every time we have an inverted yield curve <laughs> leads to a recession, right? So there, there's no really way to win this except to say, hey, there's a risk either way. It, it's probably silly you know, to just go into every, to, to, you know, to be an investor in the markets and just be sitting on 100% cash because yes, while it's true, a recession could, could come, could be six months away. But it's also silly to sit here and think that there's no risk of it at all just because it hasn't happened yet when history shows that a lot of times we get the recession after it uninverts, which hasn't even happened yet. Although there are times in the 70s during periods of high inflation where we had a recession still during the inversion process or still during the time that the yield curve was inverted. So, yeah, I mean, you know, no matter what you look at it, people could say this time is different and they could be they could be talking about two completely different outcomes, right? Whether you're looking at the yield curve, whether you're looking at just the market. Um, you know, I, I look at Bitcoin and, and I historically what has happened is that it, it climbs the wall of worry, even in tightening cycles. And, and then you, you get some type of recession or recession scare. It puts in a macro high or low or a double bottom or something like it. The Fed starts to print and then we go to new highs, right? Same thing happened in, in 2015, right? You know, the Bitcoin basically just was climbing the wall of worry. We get a recession scare. You know, we get all this QE and Bitcoin goes to new highs. So I think that's the, you know, that's the, the hard part to navigate is like, well, does it, does it get that? that macro higher low, or is this the cycle where it just doesn't do that? And if it doesn't do that, then that might not bode well for later part of the cycle if you don't get that typical, you know, structure to form, right? Like a low and then a macro higher low, right? A low and then a macro double bottom, right? Here you have a low, but you don't really have any type of macro higher low to look at in the same way that you got like this cycle and the same way that you got the cycle before. We don't have that. I don't know if we'll get it. I think the thing that I've learned is, is try not to be so rigid in some of these views, even though some of them pan out, right? All the people that care about is the one that doesn't. So, um, and I remember back over here feeling, you know, somewhat accomplished because I'm like, well, you know, the stock market dropped just like we said it would. 
It knocked Bitcoin below the bull market support band, just like we said it would. Altcoins are bleeding against Bitcoin. Dominance is going higher, just like we said it would. And I said back then, guys, normally when I start to get things right, it's only a matter of time before the market, you know, rips me a new one and, and makes me understand that I, I still have a lot to learn. And sure enough, that's what happened. Sure enough. So um, I think we'll wrap it up. I, I know this has gone on for a long time. Just to summarize, I, I just want to say, look, total three has put in a higher high. Congratulations to everyone in the altcoin market. It's put in a higher high. Look to see if it can form a macro higher low. Although maybe it'll just do what Bitcoin does and, and not do that. But congratulations to everyone. I still think Satoshi valuation was better preserved this year in Bitcoin, but I'm not going to continue to just say that same thing. I want people to, you know, to, to, to not feel like they can't diversify and then be happy about it if it goes up on its USD pair. Because I know that's what people care about. So congratulations to that. Total three, higher high. We'll see if it can put in a higher low. We'll, of course, follow the resolution of the macro stuff and see if it makes any difference. Um, and I'll, I'll just keep sharing my thoughts. Um, some will be right, some will be wrong. And I will try to be as open and honest about that as I can. And um, yeah. Make sure you guys subscribe. If you're not subscribed, give the video a thumbs up. We also do have the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. See you next time. Bye.